Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn how to create an Amazon EKS cluster. This video is for people who does not have an experience with how to create an EKS cluster on AWS. The agenda for this video is to learn what is Amazon EKS, what are the requirements to create an EKS cluster like VPCs and IAM roles, and EKS essential add-ons, the add-ons which are mandatory and if you do not install those add-ons then your Kubernetes cluster will not work as expected. So to start with, I will start with what is Amazon EKS. So you can see this diagram. I got this diagram from the Kubernetes website and this is how any Kubernetes cluster will look like. So in this in any of the Kubernetes cluster, we have a control plane as you can see here and we have this data plane nodes. So what is Amazon EKS? Amazon EKS has a managed service provided by AWS which has created the process or created the automation for managing these control planes. So you as a user do not need to worry about the ITC nodes, the scheduler, control managers or anything. This is all managed by AWS as part of their EKS managed service. You as a user or a developer just need to focus on the data planes where you will be actually deploying your applications. But the scheduling part and all the Kubernetes control plane related stuff is managed by the EKS itself. And if something happens to any of the nodes like your ITC nodes, your control plane nodes, it's an EKS responsibility to take care of those parts. It is high available. So the simple definition of EKS is it is a managed Kubernetes service that makes it easy to run Kubernetes on AWS without you need to install and operate your own Kubernetes control plane nodes or ITC nodes. So that is the small definition of the Amazon EKS. Now we will explore how we will create an EKS cluster. Now we will create an EKS cluster. So for that you can search for EKS and you will get Elastic Kubernetes Service, the most trusted way to start, run or scale your Kubernetes. So we'll just click on this and click on Create Cluster. So for now we will go with this custom configuration. This is the new EKS auto mode that they have launched recently we will explore that as well but for now we will just create a custom EKS cluster and disable the auto mode you will provide your cluster name so I am providing the EKS and this is where it is cluster I am role so if you click on this create recommended role so EKS will automatically create a role which are required for an EKS cluster. So here you can see it has selected the AWS, it has selected this option EKS cluster and if you click on next, it needs EKS cluster policy. So this is also managed by the AWS and it has all the policies attached to this role which are required for an EKS cluster to work. So I have already this cluster role created by EKS automatically so I am using that and here you specify the Kubernetes version so here you will get all the Kubernetes version which is currently supported by AWS and also the dates when the support will end extended support all the details so I am going with the latest version an upgrade policy we are going with the standard what does that mean here you can see end of standard support is this and of extended support is this. So if you actually go with the extended support, the price of that Kubernetes cluster is high. So that is what standard and extended is. Cluster access, so we wanted to have the cluster admin access. So we are selecting this option. Cluster authentication mode, we are going with EKS API and we are just going with all the default options and click on next. 
and here you will be selecting the VPC. So I'm selecting the VPC that I have created. So here I wanted to show you one thing. So this is my VPC and this is the prerequest also that all your public subnets should have the tag like uh, let me just show you kubernetes dot io slash role elb1 it's not required right now but when you actually create the load balancers and access your application on the browser then eks find that uh, uh, your load balancer controller automatically find the subnets where it has to create a load balancer so it uses the tags so to find out the public subnets it needs this tag so you really need to have this tag apply to your public subnet at least two of your public subnets that is the minimum requirement of uh, eks load balancer controller to create a load balancer on the public subnets so this is you can add it later also but for now i have already added it and here we will be selecting all the private subnets we really don't need the public one we don't need any security groups for now and uh, that's it and the cluster endpoint access we are going with public and private click on next click on next and this is where the add-ons comes into the picture so here you can see that when you create the eks cluster using uh, console directly it automatically selected all the required plugins so this core dns cube proxy amazon vpc cni like if i this select any of these here you can see that i will get this option core dns will not be installed this may affect your ability to run kubernetes application so your core DNS, cube proxy, VPC, CNI, you can remove this node monitoring agent because this is to monitor your nodes. So this is not an essential plugin. So we will not go with this. And this is also the EKS pod identity agent. So like if I deselect this, you will see this option. Identities will not take effect unless it's running on your cluster. So I will be going with all the required plugins or required add-ons which are required for your kubernetes cluster to work with all the functionalities once you select all this you click on next and here you can see that all these add-ons comes with the version also so there you can see the cube proxy its version vpc cni matrix servers core dns amazon ek so everything comes with the version also and it is your responsibility to update the plug update the version of these uh, add-ons on a regular basis or whenever there is any security concerns and anything like that so it is your responsibility to manage these plugins updates on a regular basis so click on next and here you will see all the details and just click on create so now your cluster is creating it will take 15 to 20 minutes before you will see the status as available now you can see the cluster status is active and if you open this you will get all the details related to your eks cluster and uh, here you can see if I go to the resources option because we have installed lot of add-ons here you will see that all the pods are getting created here but if I click on this they will be in the pending state and they must be waiting for because there is no nodes available to schedule the pods so as a next step as you can see here you have to provision the compute capacity and you have two options like manage node group or target profile also.